All right, how's it going, y'all? Today we're going to be talking about one of the features of a Synology NAS that really can make it your own truly personal cloud, and that is Synology Drive. So Synology Drive is an awesome feature for your Synology NAS. However, it's something that I had not been using until recently because I felt like it was mostly geared toward businesses. However, as soon as I started using it, I realized just how awesome it is. So first, let's go over what Synology Drive is. So Synology Drive basically sets up your NAS as a Google Cloud server. It basically allows every single one of your users to sync their home folder or any other folder that they'd like to directly to their computer, making it really easy to access. They can also choose to sync what's called team folders. So if you've got multiple people who need to collaborate on the same shared folder, you can have them all sync that folder as well and easily access it. They can also access these folders over some pretty well-written mobile apps and even over a web browser. Then Synology Drive also has version control, meaning you can store up to 32 thin snapshots if you're using BTRFS. This means there's nothing stopping you from having multiple versions of your documents in case something gets corrupted or even if you make a change that you just didn't like. You'd be able to go back to previous versions of that file and pick out the one you'd like to use and drop it right back into place. Or even keep both of them and merge in the old changes. It's a lot like using Git, except it's just running natively without having to do any extra configuration or anything like that. Then for small and medium businesses, Synology Drive makes syncing between two different sites incredibly easy. Basically, all you have to do is set up a NAS at both locations and install Synology Drive on both of them. Then users in both sites can collaborate as if they were both on the same network. And because the NAS is at each network, you're going to significantly lower your bandwidth because basically all the changes are just going to be stored on the NAS at each site. That means you're not having to send the full files over every single time as if you were using SMB over VPN to access the files at the other office. Instead, you'll be able to access them at local speeds. It's a great way for small businesses with really small IT departments to set up some very complex features that really make getting work done so much easier. All right, so now to begin, go ahead and log into DSM. We're gonna go ahead and install it from the package center. So all you have to do is type in drive up here and you're gonna to wanna to install Synology Drive Server and just click install. I'll be doing another video on Synology Office at one point. So Synology Drive Server has basically replaced all of the other applications such as Cloud Station Server and a bunch of other things to have it all in one central location, which is gonna be really good. And they've clearly put a lot of thought into this. So while this is taking the time to install, I did want to talk about security of Drive Server. So Synology Drive Server, to get the true Google Cloud style remote access from anywhere, requires you to open up ports on your router, which if you watch my security video, which I'll link in the description, has some security vulnerabilities. It is not to say that you should never open up these ports, but it is essentially that if you can get around it, you should not because it's just added security. The way that I use Synology Drive is I'm mostly using stuff locally anyway, so it's not too big of a deal. Then since I've got Synology Drive configured to automatically download all of the shared files to my local hard drive, if I'm out and about, I really don't necessarily need access to the Synology Drive server. Essentially, I can make any modifications I'd like to. Then when I get back into my local network, all those changes will just get merged in. However, there could be times where I need the most up-to-date file that somebody else on my network has worked on. So for those cases, they're pretty few and far between. And so what I do is I just go in and connect to my VPN back to my network. This gives me a secure local access without having to worry about any kind of vulnerabilities that could exist within Synology Drive Server. However, this is business-oriented software. However, this is software that Synology has designed for businesses to use. I would not be too worried about opening up these ports if it doesn't work for you. A lot of users use this as truly their own family cloud so that their family all over the country is able to sync files and always have backed up information for that. And so for that, always having to configure a VPN really doesn't make too much sense. It's too much of a hassle. And for me, my personal belief is that having the backups of everybody's files is worth it 
compared to the risk of Synology Drive possibly having security vulnerabilities, especially if you make sure everyone on the network has really strong passwords. All right, so now that's gone ahead and installed, so let's go ahead and open it up. You'll notice a couple of things. It's installed three different things. First, there's Synology Drive Admin Console. This is where you can configure all of the different Synology drives. Basically, what sharing, what people are allowed to do, and things like that. Then there's actually Synology Drive. This is the client that people will go through to access their Synology Drive through an internet browser. Then there's Synology Drive Share Sync. That's the service that's set up for the multi-NAS, multi-network environment. You would only use this if you wanted to have two different offices synced up to the same Synology Drive server. All right, so first, let's go ahead and just open up Synology Drive Admin Console. And so here is where we can configure everything. So let's just go over some of the general things. The overview page is exactly what it says it is. It just gives you overall information. The client list will show you every single device that somebody has hooked up to Synology Drive. That way you can make sure there's nothing weird going on. And if you see a bunch of downloads that are slowing down your NAS, you can start to figure out which one is using that. Log is the log files. Then there are team folders. Team folders are essentially folders that allow multiple groups to all collaborate on the same shared folder. So for example, if you're a business, you could have all of HR having their own team folder. They could all store files on this and everyone would have access to these files. That way everybody can collaborate with them. One thing to note, Synology Drive is not SMB. You cannot have two different people editing the same document. And if you do, you're going to have a merge conflict. Synology Drive makes them relatively easy to deconflict, but you can't have two people collaborating in the same document unless you're using the Synology Office Suite. But if you're just using Word, it will not work and you'll have to have them deconflict things. But once you have everybody kind of trained on how to use it, it's really very straightforward. One thing you're also going to see is that under My Drive, the user homes are disabled. So the way that Synology Drive works is it automatically uses the user's home folders as their main home folder. So what you need to do is make sure that in Control Panel, user home folders are enabled. So we're just going to go into Control Panel, User, Advanced, and go down to User Homes and enable it. You can choose which volume to put it on and just click apply. So now if we refresh this, we're going to see that it is enabled. So my drive is going to be the personal drive for every single one of your users. So let's click versioning and see what we've got the options for. Here you can set version control. I would highly recommend it, especially if you're using BTRFS with those thin versions. There's really no reason not to have it. Then under maximum versions, the maximum you can have is only 32, which I kind of wish was higher. This is the limit that they allow, which I'm actually kind of surprised by. I'd like to see this at least over 100. Just because they are so thin, it doesn't seem like it would be that big of a deal to open up that number. Then you've got basically two different options for rotation policy, which basically says which versions are going to get deleted when you hit 32. I don't know why the default is the earliest versions. Instead, I would do IntelliVersioning, which is a great name. Basically, what it allows you to do is it kind of goes through and picks what it thinks are the most major versions. That way you don't have just the most recent 32 versions, which if you're saving a bunch in a day, you could easily max out. Then if you needed something from a few days ago, you're just not going to have that unless you're using BTRFS snapshots on top of this. With IntelliVersioning, it will go through and rotate everything. Then you can also add on rotate versions regularly, which basically deletes any versions that are over this number of specified days. This is something you can set up later on once you've kind of figured out the dynamics of your environment. I'd say 60 days is probably a fine starting place, but it totally depends on what kind of files these are and how often people are going to need to go back and look at them. All right, and now we're just going to click OK. All right, so now say we wanted this general folder to be able to be a shared folder amongst a bunch of different users. We just click on it and click enable. Choose the versioning and whatnot. And that's it. 
Now any users with permissions to this folder are going to be able to set it up as a shared team folder. It's really incredibly easy. All right, and so now the last option is settings. So then under user sync profiles is where you can start to refine specifics on what you want to get synced and what you do not want to get synced. So for example, you're working on a project that constantly has like cache files that you don't want sync to the server. You can go in and click create, basically put the file extension here and uncheck it. That way those files will not get synced to the server because they're just cached files only meant to be used locally. And then you can go through and apply which users to go to. And then under others is where you can start getting more specific information. So this is really going to play the biggest part when you're having a larger office and you start seeing performance decreases. You can start figuring out when to index and things like that. This is especially important if you have a very large database, you can set to use it all in RAM, which is something that most local users are really not going to need to do. But if you've got a large office, it will really speed up that sync performance. So I'm not going to go over these because they're very specific, but that's basically the gist of how to set up Synology Admin Console. Now let's go in to Synology Drive. We're going to first open up with the web portal. So we just click on it. And this right here is the drive that we've got set up. And you can actually customize some of the web interfaces here. And so you can go through and you've got two different types of folders. There's my drive and team folders. And you can also go through and have things that are shared between people. So say I've got something in my local folder that I need one of my office mates to have access to. I can go through it and incredibly easy, just share it with their profile and it will show up under theirs with shared with me. It's really easy to do for a collaborative environment while also maintaining privacy for everyone. So under my drive, there's no files in here right now because I just created a folder. But now let's just drag and drop this file in here. And just like that, it will upload and it will be part of my user folder. It's actually quite a large file, so it's gonna take a minute. And so now it's gone through and uploaded. Now, if I set up my laptop to automatically download Synology Drive files, when I opened my laptop next time and Synology Drive ran, it would download it in the background, which is a great feature to have if you always want the most up-to-date files on your computer. Then we go through and look at the general folder, which is under the team folders. Basically, this is a folder where anyone on my team who has access to general is going to be able to add edits and they will be here. Basically being able to access all of these things locally without having to go over SMB, which for certain files is really great to have because it's so much faster to run things locally, especially when you're having small file read and writes. And overall, it's going to be less stress on the server. All right, so now this is the web portal and everyone will have this. But where Synology Drive is really great are the actual apps. So let's go ahead and install it. And just right here is Synology Drive Client. So we'll just go ahead and click the Mac install. And it's going to go ahead and download it and install. It's going to take a minute. And so right here, here is the Synology Drive Client. So let's just go ahead and install it. All right, so now we've gone ahead and installed it, and now we're going to go ahead and configure it. So let's just go ahead and click Start Now, and we've got two different options here. You can either do a sync or backup. A sync allows you to sync all those different versions directly to Synology Drive. That means if you're working on multiple computers or working in between teams, all the files are always gonna be up to date on the Synology Drive. Then there's backup. Backup allows you to backup any files from your computer directly to Synology. That way, if you've got a certain folder where you don't necessarily need it to be synced, but you always wanna make sure you've got a backup of that folder just in case, you've got it there. And you can also do periodic snapshots and things like that using BTRFS on those files. But we're gonna go ahead and use a sync task. So here, type in the IP address, the domain name, or the quick connect of the Synology drive. And if you're gonna be opening this up, make sure to enable SSL. And so here it makes it incredibly easy to start syncing files between your NAS and your local computer. Basically the folder on top is what is on the Synology server and the folder on bottom is where it is on your local computer. And I'm actually fine with this location, but if you'd like to edit it, you can edit it here. 
Then under advanced mode, you can choose which folders to sync, any file filters you'd like to do. Basically, you can set it for a specific computer. Oh, I don't want these files. And then there's also sync mode. Two-way sync allows them to keep in check. But if you don't want any changes made to the local computer to get back to the NAS, you can say download only. Then if you want the other way around where things are only uploaded, you can choose that here as well. But we're just gonna go ahead and click next. Then the next option allows you to make an additional folder for any files that are shared with you. And so I like that, so I'm gonna click okay. But if you don't, just say maybe later. All right, and now it's set up. Yada, yada, yada. And now we've got everything set up to sync. These are our settings. And if you don't like this logo because it's a little bit much, what you can do is go into global settings, display, and use minimalist system tray icon and hit apply. And it looks so much better, especially on a Mac where it matches everything up here. I like that a lot better. But now it is just automatically syncing everything for us. You can go through and see all of your tasks as well as the logs of what was downloaded, but it's really just incredibly easy to start running with. So now let's see what's happened. We're gonna go into that folder that was created and we can see right here that that ISO file that I dragged and dropped into the desktop has now been downloaded. But let's say I also wanna add in the Synology drive right here. We're gonna move it there and it's going to upload it and it uploaded it incredibly quickly. And now if we go back to the drive, we can see that the DMG file has made it already onto my drive here and any changes to it will be synced. It's really easy to get everything going. So now let's start messing with a text file. All right, so all I've done is I've created this test file and it's saved within Synology drive. It's just a text file, but we're gonna be able to see what it's like when it's updated. So we'll go ahead and click save on it. And so now it's going to go ahead and update it. And we're going to see if we refresh our web browser that the file is now in here. And now let's see what happens when we try to edit it. And so it's immediately updated the server. Now let's go ahead and say, well, I really do not like that update. We can just go in and go into history and we can see all of the different snapshots that we've got. And then just click these three dots for the one that you want. Let's say this one and let's just download it. And it downloaded to our computer with the old versions. It's a really easy way to be able to have everybody gain access to previous versions of their files, meaning that people don't have to talk to IT to try to get something fixed that they broke. Instead, they can quickly just go back in and grab it, really saving a ton of time in an office environment. All right, so those are the basics of Synology Drive. It's an awesome feature and really expands what your Synology can do, and it can really make your own personal cloud. Go ahead and leave any other tutorials you'd like to see me make in the comments below. And have a good one. Bye.